Good evening friends. This is Tejashri Rani presenting a topic on a judicial philosophy on Justice Krishna Ayer. Professor Upendra Bakshi has pithily put it that the Supreme Court for Indians was Krishna Ayerized to become the Supreme Court for Indians. Yes, a legion, a phenomenon, one man army against injustice an upholder of all, just causes and above all a great humanist, the one who helped to develop a unique jurisprudence that helped common man, common people to have a access to justice. Justice Krishna Iyer's style of judgment is unique, inimitable and his vast knowledge reflected in them. That's why I have chosen to flash a light on some of the remarkable judgments and he has more than 700 judgments in his credit. Let us throw flash on these judgments one by one. In Maneka Gandhi case, yes, my first judgment is Maneka Gandhi case and in Maneka Gandhi case 1978, he expanded the interpretation of right to life and personal liberty. Also, he focused on the features of the interlinking of the provisions of Article 19, Article 21 and Article 14 of the Indian Constitutions, holding that these provisions are inseparable. In this, the confiscation of the Maneka Gandhi's passport by the authority was questioned and thus Justice Krishna here observed that the watershed between a police state and people's raj is located partly through its passport policy. The policing of the people's right of exit and entry are fraught with peril to liberty unless the policy, policy is precise, operationally respectful and harassment proof. So this shows his liberal attitude to protect the individual's right from state-aided abuses. Friends, in the year of 1970s and in the 80s era, only because of Justice Krishna Iyer, the Supreme Court's attitude towards granting bail becomes liberal. So, the practice of refusing bail for all over the non bailable cases and even the cases in which life sentence uh, cases, bail was hardly given those days. So now the delay in disposal of the case can be considered a factor for granting bail. Let's come to the next judgment and that judgment is Gudikanti Narsimulu versus State of Andhra Pradesh. In this judgment, Justice Krishna Iyer order with the poser and that poser we all know that bell or jail. So this question was further uh, question along with the well at the pre-trial pre stage or at the post-conviction stage. Friends, he highlighted factors for granting bail as first the time spent by the accused in the jail and the prospect of the appeal being delayed in the court for the hearing. For him, he said that bail is the rule and jail is the exception. He further ruled that heavy bail from poor man is obviously wrong. Poverty is a society's malady and sympathy. Not sternness is the judicial response. And so this was the Gudikanti judgment in 1977. Now come to the third judgment. My third judgment is for the discussion of Justice Krishna Iyer's a beautiful again poetic delivery that is Charles Sobraj versus Superintendent Central Judge 1978. It is held by the Justice Ayer that whenever fundamental rights are flouted or legislature protection ignored, this court's writ will run to any prisoners prejudice and breaking through stone walls and iron bars to right the wrong and restore the rule of law. Then the parrot cry of discipline will not deter 
security will not scare discretion will not dissuade and the judicial process so for if courts he further states that the, the courts are like this if courts cave in great rights are gauged within the sound proof sight proof precincts of prison houses where dissents and minorities are often caged but still will be reenacted when law ends tyranny begins history whispers that iron has never been answer to men's rights therefore we affirm that imprisonment does not spell farewell to fundamental rights although by a realistic reprisal court will refuse to recognize the full panoply of part 3 will be enjoyed by free citizens so this is what about justice krishna ayer in sarobjit case now going forward friends with the motiram versus state of madhya pradesh case in 1978 the issue regarding the surety was dealt here in the, the when the surety will be uh, uh, should be demanded and what sum should be insisted on so these two aspect are depend on variables here again a very beautiful poetic delivery we can uh, read as it shocks one conscience to ask a mason like the petitioner to furnish sureties for rupees 1 lakh the magistrate must be given the benefit of doubt for not only not fully appreciating that our constitution enacted by we the people of india and the further beautiful lines friends which i like very much those are is meant for the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker butcher the maker and the candlestick maker the bonded labor and pavement dweller so these are touching lines directly reaching to every common man of our country and he further quotes that regarding the distinct places and district uh, sureties so here he has stated a very categorically what malayali what malayali kannadi tamilians or andhras will do if he is get arrested for alleged misappropriation or criminal trespass in bastar port blair pahalgaon at chandni chowk then he cannot have sureties owning properties in these distant places he may not have uh, he may not know any one there and might have come in a batch or he may be seeking a job or in morcha so what law prescribes the geographical discrimination implicit in asking for sureties from the court district this tendency takes many forms sometimes geographic sometimes linguistic sometimes legistic article 14 protects all indians co-indians within the territory of our and article 350 sanctions representations to any authority including a court so this is what about motiram's case my friend now let us come to the next judgment known as ratlam municipality case in 1918 the new concept of polluter pay was introduced by justice krishna ayer he started the train for the judges to go to the grounds to see the actual situation the actual position rather than sitting in the court rooms so how out of way it is in this case the responsibility of the government and the industry in connection with the pollution and industrialization so all these aspects and cost of the pollution was dealt with the protection of the larger interest of the society our next judgment is for the discussion pn iswara ayer versus supreme court of india 1980 again a very different view towards the litigants we can see through this judgment let us hear his wordings as it is litigants are legal patients 
suffering from injustices seeking healing for their wounds would you tell a sufferer in the hospital that because he disclosed a certain symptoms very late therefore he would be discharged without treatment for the sin of delayed disclosure humanism which at bottom sustains let us come to and and justice cannot be refused relief unless by entertaining the plea another may sustain injury so this is how the totally different view we, we can see towards the litigants has been beautifully explained by justice krishna ayer now let us come another judgment that is known as rajendra prasad judgment uh, in 1979 he restricted the scope of the death penalty and uh, under section 302 a very common view was hold holding by other cases that 302 is equal to death penalty but here he stressed that it is a violative of article 14 article 19 and article 21 of constitution of india justice ayer narrated and the wordings are like this every saint has a past and every sinner a future never write of the man wearing the criminal attire but remove the dangerous degeneracy in him restore his retarded human potential by holistically of his fevered exhaustive or frustrated inside and by repairing though hidden the injustice of the social order which is vicariously guilty of the criminal behavior of many innocent convicts law must rise with life and jurisprudence respond to humanism so this is what justice krishna ayer lastly i must say one cannot afford to miss the drastic change of a marvelous judgment delivered in the year of 1975 yes it is a judgment of former prime minister indira gandhi ji the allahabad high court passed a judgment holding that prime minister indira gandhi was guilty of electoral electoral malpractices thus indira gandhi was disqualified and uh, from holding public offices for 6 years this was appealed before the supreme court the supreme court allowed a partial stay of the judgment justice krishna ayer held that she could be a member parliament and would be able to attend the house however she could not participate in its proceedings or vote as a member of parliament thus instead of setting aside the verdict completely and ultimately he partially stayed that judgment and indira gandhi wanted actually a complete stay on the ruling but justice krishna ayer proved that the games rules ruling do not change however the mighty person is eventually we all know a national emergency was declared a very next day recently our respected sir uh, harshit karad sir has also thrown a light on justice chandra chud's uh, de- judgment delivery style and uh, being inspired from from him today this is an attempt for judicial philosophy of justice krishna ayer while concluding i must say after the darkest chapter in the history of the indian courts the jurisprudence of justice krishna ayer breath a new life into the institution justice michael kirby on the of the australia high court described our justice krishna ayer as a poet writing in a prose i cannot agree for justice ayer who did not write his judgments he composed them he composed them and for all these and more he is my favorite english man